Doctor Who Scratch Man by Tom Baker Fear on Earth Chapter 15 The Cybermen made their way for the foe to stand towering over me. Their giant bodies were entirely encased in dark metal. They absorbed the morning light. Their heads were the worst thing about them. Smooth silver helmets with no nose. Just two blank eye discs for eyes and slit for a mouth. It made them look pitiless. The silver giants regarded me with a blank, patient stares. A third creature swelled up from the sea. It was subtly different. Side of its helmet was black, the metal was eerily transparent, exposing the terrible secret of the Cybermen. They were not robots. They had once been men. They could still see that desiccated skull lolloping around, lolloping inside the helmet, covered with wires and bolted into place. So I really wanted to live forever. I had ended up as a liver living dead. Once, long ago, on the planet of Baltus, people had begun to die out and had to sort to prolong existence by replacing the rotten flesh. His restless surgical mania was gone on until one day he somehow eradicated their souls. And at that location, or even in existence, the soul is hard to pin down. But something where, during all the drilling and gorging and cutting, the Cybermen had removed their souls. Perhaps they had been numbered, done by one of many circuits sewn into their brains, allowing them to control their splendidly strong new hands. Or maybe it was one of the drugs causing for their agonised nervous systems. But suddenly the Cybermen lost their emotions and wondered and anesthetized through existence. They were for a while living huffs, devoid of pure purpose. Then gradually the software stitched into their brains, took over, gave them a new reason for living, a set of goals aligned to logic. A cyber man had wanted to survive and survive they would. More than that, they proved they were superior to organic creatures simply by converting them to. There were no problems with this approach, as they discovered among their own population. Not everyone surrendered willing to conversation. Version. More seriously, it took up a lot of resources, so they had to be built for the finest materials. They had to be adaptable. They had to be superior. They have to be made, have the strength of ten men. They had to walk within an airless vacuum of space. They began to evade worlds, but not just to convert the population with zeal, but also to seize their material wealth in order to make their own more bodies. A thought in his plan of whisper it was that the many more worlds they invaded, the more materials they needed. And the greater they need, the yet more materials, and so they will wander to stars, trapped in a ghastly pyramid, scheme of their own devising. They wanted to live forever, instead they ended up tinned like pilchards. Such is progress. Staring at the Cybermen, three silver giants standing utterly unmoved by a briefly breathtaking sunrise. Beach, a penny dropped in my head. It dropped very loudly indeed. The scarecrow plague, I exclaimed, of course. You have been offered something you cannot refuse. Something you find irresistible. Unlimited armies. That's what has been tested on is crude. But already it's adapting. Imagine being able to turn on an entire world to Cyberman overnight. That's what you've been longing to do, isn't it? The lead Cyberman nodded, his skull lolloping forward like a little, just a little in its helmet. It's significant, it's efficient, it said, a dead mechanic rasp. Somewhere inside its skull, a light glowed, it spoke. Where well, are the test subjects? Oh, bad news, I smiled, pointing at the sick like ruins. Beach, I dealt with them. 
Even the later virgins, I keep the remains to the farmer. I write this plan off if I were you. You, if you thought being allergic to gold was embarrassing, just wait till people find out you're resistible to moths. Cyberman considered, needed to consider, having no emotions, not easily put out. No matter, he continued, equally, they were they were simply prototypes. Let me guess. I started pacing. You have offered this virus in return for obedience for higher power, haven't you? The Cyberman did not obey the lead. Do not obey the leader said. You also don't think outside the tin, old chap. I patted one on the shoulder with a clang. This island had been home to a brilliant absurd leap that you, clockwork soldiers, could never dream of. So I mean, do not dream. Exactly. You do not do many things. Do not smile. Do not think. Do not walk in the grass. Life must be terribly limiting for you. I realise that Harry's signalling me frankly. A boy scout semaphore. Do not upset them. They are let to run. I held up my hand for a moment. Peace from Harry's terrible sign language. So tell me, Silver Leader, who offered this to you? And why have I been brought here? So I ran straight and up and tilted its head. The tilted skull rolled to one side. You are brought here to suffer. Splendid. What happens next? We are waiting, said Simon. There was a small pause of ghosts of regret for orders. They're just not good enough, I that. Tell me, who offered you this plague? I would like a word for them. Simon did not apply. He said he tilted his head up just a little. He appeared to be watching the clouds. Revenue lasted just a moment. Then some men turned and walked back into the sea. As they submerged the seas around them, surged and frowned, lit with a giant and terrible light. Is that it? Sarah confounded, stepping breathlessly forward. Have the some men gone? So it would seem, I sighed, but it's not a victory. Sarah the Jane. The surprise rise stopped and the cloud sky went dark. A churning sea froze. A figure stood on the beach. It hadn't appeared. It had been, or it had always been there. And yet it definitely hadn't been there but a moment before. You see for the figure, but you what you saw through, it was like peeping in Dante's kaleidoscope. Glimpse for the figure, a placid sea was a lake of fire, a beach was paved with skulls and dunes, come burning rocks. With every step the figure took, the sand blackened. There was nothing essential about the figure. It had the rough shape of a man, all the things it appeared to be waving at me. A jaunty wave that was somehow the most sinister thing ever seen. What is the matter, Sarah asked. Doesn't belong here. I read my voice to the creature. Do you? The figure spoke a voice, distant rise down a telephone line. I do not, but I shall. You're from some other dimension, some other universe, some other way of life, looking to sneak into ours. It won't work. It will, the voice continued. It will because you will help me. I shan't, shan't, you know. Haunting this island is one thing you should, may have made of small people to this reality, people in this reality, but I shall make it my bit to seal it up, this plane of existence getting on quite well without whatever magic you have to offer. I disagree, the fluttering shape drew itself up. For a moment it was the height of the sky, the width of the horizon, and with a great screaming darkness poured out of it. Then it was once a shimmer of size of a man. 
Once more, I shimmer the size of a man. No, I fished around my pocket for you, my yo-yo. Doing deals for the Cybermen? Might as well try and explain the meaning of life to a cash machine. I'd rather do a deal with you, Doctor. I thought you wanted me to suffer. And have it and suffered? You see how well I can make all your things better. Come and visit me. You will be my ambassador. I certainly will not. You're nothing I want. You've nothing I want. Haven't I? Creature stretched at an arm and the air behind it. Case of endless night. Harry Seven looked down at his chest. Oh dear. He said, I was afraid of that. Tree trunk burst through his stomach. Branches spreading out and wrapping themselves around him. His failing arms twisted and sagged and the skin of his face blossomed and bloomed. The moss, a skull and a leaf became that of a dead and ancient ram. Sarah screamed. Shadow watched the transformation calmly. He has been affected, you knew this, Doctor. I nodded. You knew, cried Sarah, staring angrily at the pitiful figure of Harry. He did, the Shadow announced. He kept it from you. He wanted to spare you. He had hoped to find a cure. But Harry Sullivan is in my realm now. Fergo snapped his fingers. A rude customer in a rest it's a rude customer in a restaurant. God's remains of Harry Sullivan jerked to the gauze. Sarah imploringly. Sarah he said, reaching out her hand. She flinched and the scarecrow vanished. Oh Harry grasped Sarah, I'm sorry. The figure addressed itself to her. You have the doctor to blame, but your friend can be rescued. Doctor, we've got to get him back, demanded Sarah. I didn't like what was on sale and shook my head. Be brave, Sarah. But be brave, snorted Sarah. Harry was affected. He then she remembered her hand when she touched the shadows of Darlis Wall, coming away stickly with something she couldn't see. Oh no, I see you remembered about a face. The creature smiled. You're in my realm too. I reached for Sarah, but the creature got there first. His arm expanded from the beach with a vista of varying creature trees, a cold black sky, very fair. Fire, Sarah backed away, but a rippling shadow swept over her, plucking her up. She vanished, screaming into the nightmare. And that was it. Harry and Harry, both of them gone. Now it was just the creature and me, standing on the beach. I could take you along with your friends. Of course, the creature folded his arms. I don't want to see... I don't, but I want to see what you do. You can seal the hole in my reality. It would be the sensible thing. You lean forward. But then, what are your friends? You're absolutely right, I agreed. Up till a few moments ago, I would have let you be. Your incursion into the dimension, a coasted island, a few cybermen with an ideas about the station. That's hardly a bridge ahead. A death of this luckless place. A tragedy but a blink compared to the damage you could do. And if you left alone, then perhaps I have boarded up the breach and let it pass. But no, I look at, took a few steps towards him. Low my voice. You stole my friends. Yes, the figure seemed to smile. Only a fool try and rescue them. Well, I'm that fool, I grinned. I am coming to get them. I turned away and headed for the TARDIS. I didn't bother looking back. I knew the creature would go fading with the dawn. I stepped into my time machine and he went on. 
our way. We had work to do. The new day broke over the island, but there was no one there to see it. The island was empty, abandoned. <laughs>